My name is uh, James Eric Meek. Um, I grew up in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Our family was uh, all Christian. My grandfather, my grandparents, my aunts, uncles, everybody Christian. I grew up uh, believing uh, in Christianity that Jesus uh, was my Savior and that um, uh, I had a very um, powerful experience as uh, a young kid. I was probably seven, eight years old uh, when I attended uh, church um, one program. Uh, a visiting preacher came and he was uh, talking about uh, uh, hell uh, from a Christian perspective. So he had a movie that he played uh, for everyone there and it was a Hollywood production of what it would look like or feel like to be in hell. So I took the whole next day to go visit every kid in the neighborhood, every one of them and drag them to church. When I went to college and I had all the freedom in the world, I had money, nobody watching me, I thought that I would uh, do anything that I wanted to do, and I did. And uh, I would party, I would, uh, drink, I would do everything that looked fun. Well, I used that freedom to do the things I thought I had missed out on. I even lived with a drug dealer for a short period of time, right? So he would have marijuana or party drugs and at, at will. We became friends. In this period, Sheikh, the period of the school, the period of the freedom, the transition from the family to the family, which many of the boys wanted in this period. Did you feel the happiness? I became so disappointed that everything that looked fun really wasn't. I had an epiphany or a, a calling that I'm not enjoying this. I thought I would, you know, it, it sounds fun, but inside it was empty and I was miserable. Over the period of the summer, I really became very serious that I know better. I felt better, I went back to church, I started reading the Bible. For my entertainment or for my satisfaction, I would drag all of my friends into a religious conversation. And one of the people that I meet my senior year, who we become friends, well this person was a man named uh, Hamid Eid. Sheikh, you were small, you were a priest and you were a priest to the church. You grew up a little bit, you became a priest, and I want to know about this time. Subhanallah. After growing up, I, uh, you know, never heard anything about Islam until I got to college, and then we started hearing the words uh, during the Iran hostage crisis or something going on overseas made no sense until I met Mah uh, Ahmed uh, Hamid Eid uh, and uh, he told me what he believed. I, you know, what's a Muslim? What's Islam? A, you know, is it a cult? Is it, you know, just a few people? Is it 10, 20? How many of you are there? So no idea about Islam and Muslims until I met Hamidi. The biggest influence that Hamid had on me was, the first thing was his manners. Um, he wasn't a practicing Muslim as far as the prayers and the fasting. That wasn't uh, something uh, that he uh, was fulfilling. But he was 100% Muslim, 100% Arab from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and he had these manners that were very unique. So I decided that I wanted to, uh, to invite my new friend to become a Christian because it was so close already, this would be easy. So the next day or the next time we started talking, he'd stop me and say, wait a minute, he'd gone to the mosque or somewhere, I don't know where he was going. So he started bringing me all this comparative religious dialogue that have taken place and a lot of the uh, material started coming from Ahmed Didat. When I started to study the history of the Bible so I could convince others that it was true, who may be skeptical, 
that was the first time I was introduced to the actual history of the Bible. دراستك لتاريخ الأناجيل هزت إيمانك بالمسيحية ما هو الشيء الذي لم تجد له إجابة؟ For me, I never questioned the authority until I wanted to prove to others. And as soon as I learned the authority of the Bible, it was not compelling, it was not persuasive. I turned my frustration towards my friend. And I asked him for uh, the Quran, but I didn't want to read it. I didn't want to compare it. I wanted to destroy it. I wanted to see if it had the same problems that I had in Christianity. Mm -hmm. I was convinced that the authenticity of the Quran was different than the authenticity of the Bible. It didn't make one word in the Quran true, but it was authentic. It is what Muhammad said, peace be upon him. The Bible, I did not have that assurance. <laughs> Then on this comparative religious dialogue I'm having with my Muslim friend who's the easiest to convert to a Christian, I'm being introduced to things I never thought of, never even crossed my mind. Muhammad in the Bible, never heard Muhammad's name mentioned in my life about anything, good or bad. I couldn't find any verses where Jesus said, hey, I'm God, you better worship me. So then I started to question, and in the long run, I, embraced, I decided that I was the confused Muslim and he was not the confused Christian and that Islam was everything I wanted Christianity to be. من خلال رحلتك في البحث عن الإسلام ما هي الآية التي كشفت لك الحقيقة وعرفتك على الله عز وجل؟ كل هو الله هو أحد الله هو الصامد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يقل له كفوا أحد I know that in the Quran Allah says, you know, glory be to Allah to have a son, you know, he only commands a thing, he says to it, be, and it is. But kul hu Allah hu ahad, Allah hu samad, lam yalad wa lam yulad, wa lam yakunahu kufu wa nahad. That is the most powerful verse you could share with a Christian. One of the verses of the Quran or chapters of the Quran, uh, the elephant or al-fil, it's easy to almost give up. But when I hear the surah of the elephant, al-fil, and I understand the message that it delivers, that this powerful man with a powerful army of elephants was marching on the city of Mecca to destroy the Kaaba, there was nothing the people at the Kaaba could do to stop the elephants. And when I reflect on just that one ayah, or one, one surah, it reminds me that it's not me that's going to make that difference, that everything is in the hands of Allah. All the outcome is in the hands of Allah, that I can take the stress of outcome away. MashaAllah, Shaykh Khalil, when you started the faith in your heart, what did you do? Alhamdulillah. When I felt the taste, the sweetness, of Islam. Mm. There's a feeling of calm, of peace, of assurance, of confidence, all mixed, that I'm home. And the feeling you have is, Alhamdulillah, I have it. Alhamdulillah, I don't want to lose it. I chose Islam and I actually went to the mosque and by myself, and there was nobody there. It was between prayer times. So it was a small mosque. I got there, the door was locked. I sat down on the sidewalk, right on the curb, right there in front of the door. And it wasn't, it didn't feel like very long, so it might have been 10, 15 minutes max. Somebody drove into the parking lot. And they parked their car, got out, had keys, was walking up to me, said, can I help you? I said, yeah, I, uh, I want to be a Muslim. What do I have to do? So uh, he's like, okay, come in. 
So he invites me in. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. As soon as I took my shahada, everybody got excited. They started to, you know, hug me and congratulate me and they were just they were more excited than I was. And what I was feeling was something had disappeared. A wall or a barrier that I had not noticed in my entire life between me and every other person on earth. That when I became Muslim, that wall vanished. It was It was the most It was the most beautiful feeling that I ever had. And it wasn't because I was rich, it wasn't because I had all the things I wanted, it wasn't because you know, I you know, I feel like I'm in the right place as a Muslim, but there was some kind of connection of like a bond between a family you have a bond with your family stronger than you do with your community. وقرأه في قلب رقي حتما ستهدى للطريق لا شك أنك تستطيع أحيانا إحنا كمسلمين ما نستشعر نعمة الأخوة اللي الله سبحانه وتعالى امتن علينا فيها وذكرنا فيها بالقرآن الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول وألف بين قلوبهم لو أنفقت ما في الأرض جميعا ما ألفت بين قلوبهم ولكن الله ألف بينهم هذا اللي استشعره اخونا خليل لحظة اسلامه في المسجد لما شاف علاقة المسلمين مع بعض والفتهم مع بعض شعر انه هو كان محروم من هذا اصلا. احنا متى نستشعر هذه النعمة؟ سبحان الله لو تسافر دولة غير مسلمة واللي حولك غير مسلمين وياتيك شخص فجأة يقول لك السلام عليكم هني تستشعر نعمة الاخوة في الاسلام. دائما خلونا نستشعر هذه النعمة العظيمة. I am currently uh, the executive director of a charity. Called the Muslim Legal Fund of America. ما شاء الله تبارك الرحمن الشيخ خليل هو مؤسس لمشروع الدفاع عن المسلمين في المحاكم الأمريكية. ما سبب إنشائك لهذا المشروع شيخ؟ The Muslim Legal Fund is a charity that opened uh, after 9/11, the attack on the World Trade Centers. Um, there was a lot of fear, a lot of anger, a lot of anxiety, and a lot of ignorance about Islam and Muslims in America after 9-11. So the Muslim Legal Fund is a charity that was founded to collect money from Muslims all over the United States. And with the money that we collect, we spend the money on attorneys. We hire lawyers to defend Muslim rights in court. And for the last 15 years, the Muslim Legal Fund has hired the highest caliber attorneys in the United States. Uh, to make sure that the Muslim community is dealt with in a fair and uh, um, equal fashion. <laughs>